Alright folks, so in this video we are going to do a firmware upgrade to the BTEC DMR6X2 digital ham radio. We're going to upgrade from version 1.05A to 1.06. And here you can see how you can check your firmware version. And as you can see we are set on 1.05. Whenever you program your radio or update the firmware, you want to make sure that you're using the factory supplied programming cable. In this case, it's the one directly from BTEC. It does not have any chips inside of it. It's just a pass-through cable. I have a lot of other videos on this radio, so if you're concerned about installing software drivers, just check out my playlist and you'll see that. You want to take the USB end and make sure that it's firmly plugged into your laptop. The firmware update requires a factory reset. So it's a good idea to back up your code plug and even if it doesn't require it. So here from the CPS you can see we're using 1.0.5. We're going to have to upgrade the CPS and we'll do that as part of this video. The first thing you want to do is make sure you set your COM port. You can look in your device manager if you don't know what COM port your radio is connected to. From the main menu go to program, select read from radio and that will pull down your code plug. Click OK when it asks and you just want to pull other data, not your digital contacts. Make sure to click File Save to save your code plug to a safe directory. Next you want to go to the BTEC website. Click on Support and then go down to Software. And here you can download the firmware update and the CPS. You want to select the DMR option. And you're going to be presented with a series of upgrade files. We're just going to go ahead and scroll down and we're going to pick the one for 106. This is going to pull a zip file down to my downloads directory. From my downloads directory, I want to right click on the zip file and pick extract. And that's going to extract a folder to my downloads directory. Once that's done, I'm going to open the folder. I'm going to want to take a few moments to go ahead and read any README or README first files. That way I can understand what the upgrade procedure looks like and understand the instructions. So here's a README first file. And as I go through that, it will have the instructions required. In order to update your firmware, your radio needs to be in DFU mode. That's Device Firmware Update Mode. They really stress this in a README file, and that's why it's important to take a look at these. We're going to go ahead and go through the steps right now, so that way you'll know how to do it. You're going to want to push the orange alarm button at the top of the radio and the PF1 button directly below your PTT button at the same time while turning the radio on. The radio will blink a red light, letting you know that the radio is in DFU mode. Once you complete the firmware update, you're going to need to do a factory reset and apply your code plug again. In order to do the factory reset, you want to push the PF1 button and the PTT button at the same time while turning your radio on. When this happens, it will reinitialize your radio and you will need to add your date and time configuration back to your radio. The README first file also goes through a number of things that are addressed in the firmware update. Most notably, the radio will now hold 200,000 DMR contacts. That's a big deal. Right now the database is around 136,000, but it shows no sign of slowing down. It also addresses various bug fixes. It does not give the APRS on analog option that many people hoped for. So look for that in a future firmware update. Okay, from the folder that we extracted from the downloaded zip file or archive file in our downloads directory, we want to run the DMR6x2 setup file. We get a Windows protected your PC, and that's because this file was not digitally signed. We're going to go ahead and run it, and it's going to ask if we want to go ahead and run from an unknown publisher. We downloaded this from the BTEC website, so we feel reasonably safe, and we click yes or OK. That's going to take us through the setup wizard, and normally I pick all the defaults, but for some reason this wants to install the software to my D drive. My computer doesn't have a D drive, so I change it to C. And then I install in the default location. I'm also going to launch the program after installation. Once this is done, the application will open up, and then I can apply the firmware update. I just click Finish, and here we go. Now what I'll do is I'll go over to Help, About, and check and you can see we're running version 1.0.6 so that's good news it worked next thing I do is I want to go to tool from the main menu and I'm going to pick firmware update 
Now, I had seen where people reported that this wouldn't launch the firmware update file, but if you look at my menu bar at the bottom, you can see that my virus protection stops something. And once again, it's because it's an application from an unknown publisher. I click OK, and it opens up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to browse to the SPI file in the download directory, or the directory we extracted from the archive file. And I want to go ahead and I want to pick that file, click Open. The next thing I do is I want to make sure that my port is configured correctly. And what I'm going to do is select 5 like we did earlier. Yours may be installed to a different port, so you can check that in Device Manager. I'm going to click Write, and then I'm going to click OK, and it's going to write the firmware to my radio. Make sure to not unplug your radio when this happens, or you could have a corrupted radio, which would take some effort to, to fix. This normally takes a few moments, so we'll go ahead and wait. When it's done, we'll get a message letting us know if the firmware update was successful or not. And here we go. We get the write complete or write success message. We go down and we click exit. And now that part's done. Again, from the readme file, I just want to stress that you need to do the factory reset. Now, what's unique about this version of firmware is that you don't need to do an icon update if you've previously updated your icon set to 1.1. We did this as part of the 1.05 firmware upgrade. So if you have an older radio that hasn't been updated in a while, you may need to do that. So you may want to go back and take a look at some past videos that I've done on firmware updates if you're unsure of the procedure. Okay, once everything's said and done, we can go back into the radio and use the procedure that we used before to go to the device info. And we can see that the firmware has been updated to 1.0.6. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, post them below. If you like this video, go ahead and click thumbs up like, subscribe, or leave a comment. Thanks everybody, I really appreciate it.